Hi everyone, uh, this is AJ and today we have Arunima with us and she is currently doing MBA uh, from Kelly School of Business, Bloomington, Indiana. So without any further delay, let's uh, hear about uh, her journey uh, on uh, today's our platform. So uh, first of all, thank you Arunima for being here and taking out your time and sharing your experience and uh, our journey. So first tell me like where are you from in India and uh, where did you study and uh, did you work in India? So uh, just a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. Um, thanks for having me. So um, I am currently an MBA student here at um, Kelly School of Business. Um, it's in Bloomington, Indiana. I'm in the middle of nowhere, you could say. Um, so before coming here, I was uh, working in Accenture in Bangalore. Um, so I worked there for three years as a developer and a business analyst. And originally, I am from um, West Bengal, and um, so I grew up in Assam, moved around a bit, studied, did my undergrad in Orissa, and um, finally, my journey has led me to here in Kelly, where I am in my second year of MBA and um, looking to you know, leverage my MBA into tech roles. So, where did you do your bachelor's in India? Which college? So oh, uh, my bachelor's was in KIT, so Kalinga Institute of Technology. It's in Bhuvaneshwar. And what was your branch? Oh, I was in electrical engineering, um, okay. but like yeah, then I moved into software engineering. Very very different from whatever I studied. I, I guess that's what happens in India. Okay, okay. Yeah. And uh, so, did you work in India before coming here? Yeah, um, so I worked in Accenture um, in Bangalore for three years. Um, worked as a software developer and um, in a business analyst role for one year before I came here. Nice, nice. So uh, how did you get to know uh, that uh, basically you should do uh, higher studies or you should do an MBA? Yeah, um, so when I was working in Accenture, like um, I had to deal a lot with our CPG and FMCG clients. And the entire basis of my work depended on me understanding how the functional part of their business work. So um, after a point of time, I was finding it very difficult to relate to the work that I was doing. And also, I really wanted to move more into the functional side of things um, rather than like uh, being very limited to an entirely tech and development role. So that's where um, I then tried to move into a business analytic role. And then I realized how pressing the need was for an MBA. And uh, from there, I decided to just um, get an entire international perspective of things instead of just, uh, I did think of doing an MBA in India, but I also decided to give the GMAT and um, got selected here in Kelly. So now I'm doing my MBA here. So, so what was your profile basically when you applied for your MBA? Um, so I had um, three years of experience in Accenture, um, both on the tech side as well as in the business side. So mm -hmm. that was what my experience. Um, I had a, a good GMAT score, you could say I had a 740. So with that profile, um, I would say that in, for MBA, technically they do prefer four to five years of experience. So that's why I was um, waiting to also apply uh, next year, which would have been this year. But um, thankfully, I applied one year ago, and uh, yeah, so here I am. So, uh, did you give uh, uh, IELTS or TOEFL as well? And what was your score in that? Um, I get I gave TOEFL. I uh, it was I think hundred ten. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And what was your GPA in your college? Uh, my GPA was eight point four out of a ten based scale. Okay. So when you were applying, like, why did you decide to uh, do MBA, not masters, basically? Okay, um, you mean masters in business? Uh, masters in basically maybe electrical engineering or masters in computer science or data science. Why only MBA? Why not masters in business analytics or something like that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Um. So I was like really. I had worked in that. that um, arena you could say for three years I had worked as a developer um, my undergrad was in engineering and so as I worked I realized that I wanted more to move into a management side of things and I feel as I saw in my career of three years it 
it is something that was very much required especially in india to move ahead faster so uh, considering that and also the requirements of my role heavily depended on uh, everyone else that i was working with had an mba so it was very much required while speaking with clients to speak their language in terms of functional and business perspective so that's why i chose to do an mba instead of a masters because my end goal was more towards product management rather than a product development which i had been working on earlier nice nice so when you applied basically then uh, where did you apply in what countries and what universities did you apply okay um so uh, honestly i uh, initially I, i'll tell you that i was interested more in masters in management which was in europe and um so that's like um the europe version of an mba and uh, since my experience was quite less and um mba especially in the us it requires 4 to 5 years at least to get mm-hmm. uh, like um they prefer it post graduation work so that's why i initially tried thought of that um but then like with a good gmat score i um like talked with a couple of consultants and they said like um i since i was bordering on 3 years of experience mim masters in management was more inclined towards people with 1 to 2 years of experience so i thought let me just um wait it out and apply for an mba for a top school um so i had just applied to kelly and i had applied to one in canada um but yeah the kelly one unexpectedly they selected me and gave me a full ride scholarship and so uh, although initially i was thinking even then even with the full ride i was thinking i could probably like apply again next year try for an ivy league um but then i thought um, it's a full ride so i just i was like at the end of the day the roi would have been twice so i was like yeah let's do this that's good that that's good that you got full scholarship you know in kelly uh, congratulations for that yeah. very few people get full scholarship nice very nice so uh, how is your curriculum looks like can you please tell more about the course structure and uh, your um, business school curriculum as well yeah um so business school um in mba it in entire us they follow pretty much a similar curriculum so first off let me go um semester by semester so once you come in it becomes very very hectic um i'm sure that might also be the case with any other masters degree so there is this very very um intensive course in the first semester which is called core and in that they give you a very like fully holistic overview of all the subjects starting from finance accounting marketing to operations like everything that um a business degree should hold so this gives you a very good base and this also provides you the interest to know what you want to major in so that's something that all business schools do in the first semester it gets a bit hectic but then you learn what you want i realized what i want to do um in that first semester um they also have a lot of professional development courses which i feel is very important because um in india especially in my undergrad we only focused a lot on on studies and here it's more about you as the person and really what you want to do in life so so that was um so that's like the overview of the first semester going from there um from second semester you get to choose your classes you get to choose what major you want to do um so i was uh, going for a marketing and business analytics major i selected courses like that and um again they provide you very much flexibility of how many courses what all subjects you want to take what you want to do so yeah i would say that that is pretty much and the whole course um as you expect from an mba is very much presentation based very much um group work and that is very heavily relied upon uh, so in every subject you have to work with um, diverse groups and that really like brings in an international perspective to all your um deliverables nice so how long is the course and how much is the tuition fee uh, on every tuition fee for this course right um so it's a two year course um depending on how 
many subjects or how many um, courses you take you can sometimes graduate early as well um the mm-hmm. tuition fee for this i think is um so kelly's is a bit lesser but on average i would say that mba is uh, mba tuition fee on a year would come in around uh, 100000 usd so that's like an average base um i think kelly also is around that figure and uh, for two years um together nice okay so what do you think like what was the main reason that you got a scholarship what, what was the main uh, spike or sparking factor in your profile oh it was definitely the gmat um they do they do kelly focuses a lot i feel on um academics and also a lot of factors come into the play like when you apply for um mba you have to fill out essays um many of which talk about what your next uh, goals are and what your like future goals and long term vision is and what they look at is where you want to go does that like make sense so for me with a product management background i wanted to go into uh, sorry product development background i wanted to go into product management which makes sense because that's what companies look for as a background so when i put in my essay that i want to go to product management it fit and it was a simple path so that's what colleges look for is are you looking at something unrealistic like it it it's totally possible to do it but then say me without any finance background <laughs> i want to go into investment banking so that would be a bit like a stretch so they look at two primary things the first is does your goal make sense and um because and again you don't have to follow that path it's just that it helps to know once you get started that this is your goal and secondly um gmat score i would feel is a very big differentiating factor um for getting a scholarship nice nice so <clears throat> so you said you had a good gmat score how long it took you to prepare for the exam Oh um I was like preparing on and off for about a year and ah. then I took yeah uh, I was just like not really very fully focused just like on and off preparation but then um when I decided the date I wanted to give I took like a um, two month break and I fully studied the whole two months and um, gave the exam yeah nice so your program does it have a mandatory internship also or how do how do people get internships there yeah yeah um so there we we do internship that's sort of like um, as is expected of us especially going into full time that's very much required um with regards to internships so there is a career service in every college for mba um however as internationals there are some companies who don't really sponsor or maybe um they don't um, take internationals so it comes down to us after our career services to look for um placements um offline like um by ourselves so doing off campus recruitment so that's like um the two ways that, that i personally I uh, focused a lot more on off campus because I wanted to go into tech and there were um like there weren't many companies coming on campus for tech so yeah okay okay and how is the basically you said about first year and uh, basically uh first first semester you have to have some uh, general courses and second semester you can take from second semester onwards you can take specialized courses is there any like in mba do you have to write uh, papers or thesis or something like that also it's just fully course based mba oh um it it depends i would feel on what um course and what your interests are like um so here in mba and i feel in masters as well uh, it's it's very flexible as to what you want to do it has um, not been written down it's it's really entirely up to you like i have a classmate who came here for an mba but he decided that um he was very much interested in public policy so he began taking courses from a different like um kelly's alternate uh, program which is ctia so he moved into that and he is getting his courses and his grades and everything from there but he will graduate with an mba so 
at the end we are very like very flexible with what we want to do so um if someone's interest is more towards research and i do have a few friends who are uh, interested in that so they are the ones who are like writing thesis papers and publishing it and working with the professors on that um apart from that some who want to do a general mba like me with a major i have the flexibility to do like take my courses and do anything like that nice nice so how is the job scenario looks like basically when do companies come to uh, the campus and uh, is it similar to india or is it something different and uh, do you have to do something special for getting a job oh um yeah so the job scenario right now of course is very um different from a very normal year um although pre covid i would have said um in general for mba there there has always been a demand especially if you um are if you wish to go into say tech for example or some very high profile like operations where there is a lot of demand so that has been the case for on campus uh, do you mean like on campus how many companies are coming yes yes <clears throat> okay um yeah so on campus um we since kelly is very much a marketing school so we do get a lot of um cpg and um packaged goods and like a brand management roles coming in we have um png we have a lot of the top brand management and um cpg companies coming here especially if, uh, regarding marketing roles uh, many companies come um however um many of these companies don't really sponsor internationals so mm-hmm. so if you're um from the US it's it's very good you have multitude of companies for marketing roles like all the top companies come here um but if you are more towards a non marketing role you want to go into consulting or you want to um go into say tech um i feel that that then off campus is more suited okay <clears throat> interesting so what are the some some of the career paths basically after this course like once you graduate from the your course what are some of the job options or career paths that basically you can have uh, after this course okay um yeah that uh, again depends on what you are interested in um so in mba i would say that there are four to five different career paths um you can go into like any role any industry i feel that what like mba really leverages you um is like you can go into any industry without any prior experience whatsoever so that helps uh, um so coming into career paths i would say there is consulting for which you have some of the top Uh, mbb companies as well as um ui and uh, so there are different types of consulting as well you can do tech consulting you can do supply chain operations consulting so that's an entire um role there uh, then you go into marketing there is different types of marketing brand marketing and marketing and sales for um different again uh, any industry that you choose to go to thirdly there is operations supply chain for all the uh companies for who have their supply chain i'm not really uh, very much sure about that and um, then there is finance of course finance which can be either investment banking or capm um capital markets or you can go to strategic finance all of these options are there and um finally i feel that there is also general management where you can either go into like a general management position in any company that is looking for um there is also like corporate strategy that comes into consulting i feel so so honestly like it's it uh, it's not limited like you can literally go anywhere you want as long as you can show that you have the capability to do that work mhm okay so uh we discussed about your uh, journey during your uh uh during your application process your studies and then basically career options okay let me come back and uh, ask like uh, when you are applying what are some of the challenges that you faced in your application process okay. 
Okay. Um. Yeah. I. Uh, so the biggest challenge that I or anyone would face would, of course, be um, selecting either the country or the college that. Um, so there is a general process rule of thumb, which is like of having a reach school. Uh, uh, school that you know just might take you and then there is uh, the school that is like a bit difficult to get into but still you think you have a shot at so um, for me I personally um, I was not so sure if I wanted to do an MBA with three years I, I was thinking of applying maybe next year so my technique was more to look to go to LinkedIn find out uh, which colleges had students from maybe India who had lesser experience and who were uh, students there. So that's what my approach was. I also looked at colleges who gave um, scholarships and I knew that they gave scholarships because that um, in general, the whole MBA fees is a lot, especially um, from private colleges. So that was also a factor for me. So um, based on my GMAT score, I figured out uh, three to four colleges and I also decided, do I want to do it in the US with the whole migration so that's problems or do I want to do it in Canada? And um, so going off there, I applied to two to three colleges. Like, um, So I applied to just two this year, but my agenda for the next year, if I had not been selected, would have been to apply to at least um, six to seven colleges here in the US and uh, maybe two to three in Canada. So, yeah. So what was the challenge that you faced? <laughs> The challenge uh, that I faced was figuring out like where to put my money in. I feel because uh, these college applications, they themselves cost like a hundred dollars and it's like, uh, and my biggest challenge was do I invest that money now or do I invest it later? So there is this thing that if you say get rejected this year to reapply and get it again next year, is, is people say it is very difficult um, because they, they will ask you what have you done this mind blowing in one year so you have to show that so that's why my challenge was do I apply with my three years of experience which is like company uh, colleges don't really prefer or do I wait one year or do I like apply next year and if I am applying with three years what are the colleges that I can afford to let go of because if they reject me this year there is very little chance that they will have me next year so just um, selecting that and understanding like which colleges would be open for lesser uh, experienced students and not. That's interesting. So how did you overcome this challenge basically and what helped you in getting overcoming this challenge? Yeah, um, so as I mentioned, LinkedIn and research really, really helped. Um, that is very much required if you wish to do an MBA here is where you're applying um, you need to reach out to the students there um, of all the colleges and you need to speak to them about not just their experience but also like um, is the college open for having students with less experience so that's what I did I, I like uh, spoke to many in Kelly um, so uh, I spoke to the those who had lesser experience I reached out to them mm -hmm. and I was like this is my profile do you think this fits and since they had very similar profiles they they were like you know what it's it's a very good profile for kelly so i think it's a good shot so that helped a lot interesting so any final piece of advice for uh, students or aspirants who are looking for mba abroad with lesser experience or with higher experience any final piece of advice for them yeah um so for mba i would say um it's it's like not very very difficult to uh, get into uh, mba i feel especially at this time so gmat score um is one very important thing that they look at for indian applicants so um because domestics they they don't have that good um gmat score so the college wants to increase their their range for a rankings based on the GMAT scores so that's why th that is one very big thing that will help securing admission in most colleges um, secondly uh, for the essays and for the application um, all the questions that you need to answer it needs to make sense because like I mentioned your goals even if you don't do that after coming here once you're writing that essay it needs to make sense with your past 
so do it so that your past is aligned with your future goals and then the college will be like you know what it makes sense let's give this person a shot okay thank you so much arunima for taking out your time and speaking with us and uh, uh, i hope this session will be really useful for uh, uh, students and future aspirants who are looking for mba and i really appreciate uh, you taking out your time and uh, good luck in your studies uh, and rest of your semesters and uh, thank you so much again for taking out your time thank you thank you for having me i hope this is helpful to, to um, anyone who is interested and um, they are of course feel free if anyone is watching to reach out to me through linkedin um, if anyone has any further questions or yeah yeah thanks sure. again Thank you thank you